Alrighty, welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. In this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating shiny or glossy or glassy text. Uh, those are some of the names it's referred to as. Uh, you're going to see this text. It's all over the place, all over the web. You see it all over the place. Uh, so if you're wondering how to create it, here's how. First thing we're going to do is open a new document. By the way, this is the text we're going to create, if you haven't noticed. So we're going to come up here to File and hit New. And up pops a new document dialog. The width of this document is going to be 600. And the height whoops, is going to be 300. Resolution stays at 72 and canvas background color stays at white. We're going to hit OK. And here's our new document. First things first, we're going to come over here to the right hand side and rename our layer text. Hit enter, and there we go, it's name text. Now, we're making glassy text, so let's start out by creating the actual text we are going to be making fancy, I guess you could say. I'm going to put my caps on, and I'm going to type www.tutvid.com. That is the website presenting these tutorials, by the way. And I'm going to nudge this to the approximate center of my stage. And down here in the text properties panel, there's a little text field directly below your font selection area, and that's called kerning. This little option allows us to adjust the spacing between the letters. Now we're going to have a stroke on these letters, so I want to push these letters a little apart. So we're going to give this, let's try a 5. Yeah, 5 for kerning is good. And now we also want to apply a stroke. We're going to apply a white stroke. But not only that, we want to make the stroke pretty big. So in order to do that, you have to click on the stroke color picker. And right at the bottom, you're going to see there's a stroke options. In the stroke options, we are simply going to change the tip size here to 3. That essentially is telling Fireworks to paint the edge of this text with a 3 pixel brush or pencil. And that's what that's going to do. And we also want to make sure that the location of the stroke relative to the path, as Fireworks is telling me, is outside the path. Basically what that does is it makes sure that the te or the stroke excuse me, is drawn on the outside edge of your text. If I select inside path, you're going to see it's going to cover up virtually all of my text. And we do not want that. So hit outside path. And then just click anywhere on the stage to deselect that. Now, one other thing we want is we want this text to have a gradient. So applying a gradient to text is actually pretty simple. We're just going to click on the color swatch here in the properties panel. And at the bottom of the color swatch, hit fill options. Now, another dialog box pops up. And at the top, we have our fill types. And these are solid web, dither, pattern, and gradient. Well, obviously, we want gradient. And we also want a linear gradient. Now, Right here in the center, there's this edit button, and next to that are a bunch of preset gradients. We don't really want any of these presets, so I'm going to hit edit, and here's the gradient editor. Now, the way a gradient editor works is you click any one of these color stops, as they are called, these little houses on the lower side of your gradient range, color range here. And when you click one, up pops the color picker. So in this case, we're going to select a light blue. And for the side with black, we're going to select a darker blue, just like that. Now, if I accidentally click in the center and I've got like a red or something and it just makes it look terrible, you can switch the red out for a blue, but the problem is you'd have to try to guess that exact center blue. It's much easier just to get rid of it. And the way you get rid of these is by simply grabbing it and just pulling straight down and dragging away, and it just rips it right off the line and you're back to your original gradient. So just like that, now just click anywhere out on the stage to get rid of those dialog boxes. Now, working with a gradient in Fireworks is a little different than working with gradients in, say, Photoshop, if you've worked with gradients in Photoshop. Gradients, when you apply them to vector objects, remain editable. Okay, and it's actually pretty simple to edit them, but if you're not familiar with how to edit them, it can be a little tricky. Basically, the way it works is you have a line that appears across your object that has a gradient, and on each side of the line, you have these little handles. Now, the handle to the left allows you to move your gradient. 
The handle to the right controls the distance your gradient spans. For example, here you can see that now the majority of my text is that darker blue instead of the lighter blue, but it's between these two handles that the colors change. You have that blend or that gradation of colors between those two handles. Okay, so that's basically, you can think of this handle here as being that dark blue or whatever color you put on the right hand side of your color range. This handle as being the left hand color of whatever gradient you're working with. So we're moving the left hand color here to the bottom of the text. And the other thing that this handle to the right does is it controls the angle of your gradient. So obviously I don't want the gradient to go across my text. I want it to run from the top to the bottom. So I'm just going to drag this handle up to the very top of the text. Make sure it's straight up and down, just like that. Move it down a little more, just like that, and that's perfect. I'm going to deselect my text now. Now, if you're looking at this text, and you remember just a minute ago, we put a white stroke around this text. It might seem kind of pointless to put a white stroke around text, especially when we're on a white background because you can't see it. So we have to do something about that. We have to make that stroke visible. One of the easiest ways to do this is going to be simply adding a drop shadow. But it's not going to be a drop shadow in the sense that you're thinking. You could actually just apply a glow and change the glow to black because this is going to be more like a glow than a drop shadow. But I'm going to use a drop shadow because that's just what I do. We're going to change the distance to 2, so it's going to be pretty much directly behind the text, as you can see. We're going to drop the opacity to 25, so it's very light, and we're going to blur it a little more than it's being blurred now. And we're going to leave the angle as is. So now you can see that we can really see that white stroke we applied. That's basically the entire purpose of that drop shadow we just applied. It's just to really make that border, or that stroke, pop. Okay, next thing we're going to do here is make this text shiny. So I'm going to grab the vector rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle on the stage that comes about halfway down my text. And As you can see it's this blue and it's got this white stroke. I don't want either of them. I want to click on my stroke color swatch here. Up pops a stroke color picker. At the top of the color picker you can see there's a button with a slash through it. That cancels out your stroke. Now, I can edit my gradient either by coming down here to my gradient editor or I can even edit it over here on this toolbar. And basically what I want to do is click on the presets, drop down menu, and I want to go down to black to white. And I want to select the one black handle and change that to a white handle. Now, if you're looking at this, you also see two more handles on the top. These are not color handles. These are opacity handles. When you select these, you can control the opacity of the color at that point in your color range. So I'm going to select one of these. And I'm going to drop the opacity to zero. So basically what we have is a gradient that runs from solid white to complete transparency. When I click away, you can see what I mean. Over here to the right-hand side of my text, it's solid white. Over here to the left, there's nothing. That's good because that's going to give us a more realistic-looking shine. It's going to make it look uh, quite a bit nicer. I'm going to rotate the transparent handle. I'm going to put that on top. but Let me use the rotation one first and rotate it around to be straight up and down. Now let's move this over just like that. And I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to drop the opacity to about 80. Now I could control the opacity by simply shifting the gradient down a little more. That would do the same thing. But just for simplicity's sake, we're going to use the opacity slider up in the layers panel. Now, that's nice. The shine came out nice. But let's say we're looking at this image and we decide we want to change the background color to a really dark color. Well, obviously now you can see how we kind of snuck and got away with our shine there being not cut in to the text. So we're going to cut that in by using a mask. Masking is actually pretty simple. There's not much to it. And it's always good to just do it because it's not really that hard and it gives you a lot more flexibility in the end and you don't really ever get rid of the artwork. All it does is it covers it up and makes it invisible for the time being. You can always go back and undo it. All right, so select this original text layer here www.tutvid.com and come up here to edit and hit copy select that rectangle layer and come up here to edit and hit paste as mask it's going to paste that text as a mask on the shine layer now all of that uh, excuse me all of that shine is cut in that's good because now if we change the canvas color you can see all of it's cut in wonderful all right 
We're going to do a couple more things here. We're going to add a little reflection as if this is sitting on a shiny surface. And we're also going to add a little shadow to the bottom of the text. First thing we're going to do is add that shadow. I'm going to come over and I'm going to select my fill options and I'm going to change my color to a solid color. I'm going to make sure that color is black. I'm going to draw a very thin line across the bottom of my text. Maybe only a one or two pixel thick line. And I'm going to come up to these filters, not live filters. And I'll tell you why not live filters in a second. I'm going to go to blur and Gaussian blur. And it's going to say this operation will convert vectors to bitmaps. Hit OK because we don't mind in this case that it's going to do this. Blur radius, we're going to leave it at 4.5. 4.5 is perfect. And now we need to mask this into the text as well. So I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to hit edit and paste as mask because we still have that text selected. Now, as you can see at the bottom of the text, it's a little dark. So I'm going to drop the opacity to about 65 and a little lower. Let's try 50. Yeah, right around 50, that's good. Now, the reason I didn't use a live filter for that is because if I were to use a live filter and then mask it off like that, live filter would treat each little masked object as its own object, and the blur would look quite a bit different, which I didn't want. By using a traditional filter up here, it converted it from vector to bitmap, so that blur is going to look the same regardless of what I do to it. That is, unless I go in and change the actual pixel makeup of the object. But I'm not doing that. I'm just applying a mask over it, and that does the trick. So next thing we're going to do is create a reflection. We're going to do this by, number one, closing this layer. I hit the little plus minus button to the left-hand side of the eye up there in your layers palette. And we're going to grab that entire layer and drag it down to the new layers button. Drop it on that button, and we create a new layer. I'm going to click the blank space to the right-hand side of the eye on the text layer, not the text one layer. And that locks that layer up. That is going to ensure that we're not going to mess with that layer. Now with text one layer selected, I'm going to come up to modify and I'm going to hit group. So we group all of this into one object. If we open that layer up now, we can see it says group colon three objects. Now we're going to come up to modify, hit transform, and hit flip vertical. We flipped our object completely upside down. And I'm just using my arrow keys to nudge it down just a little bit below our text. I don't want this text to appear to be floating too highly above its surface here. And we're going to apply a mask to this. Now, we're going to apply a mask in a slightly different way than we just did before. If you remember before, we copied the text and we pasted it as a mask. Well, there are other ways of creating masks in Fireworks. And I'm going to show you one of those ways right now. Over here in the Layers panel, come down to the bottom and you see a button. And if you roll over the button, Fireworks tells you that's the Add Mask button. That's what we want to do. We're going to add that mask, and it gives you a blank white mask. And if you know how masks work, white just shows everything. And then as you get darker in color, it hides more and more and more until a solid black just doesn't show anything at all. So we're going to select that mask right now. Okay, it's got a little green box around it when you select it. And one little tricky thing about working with masks is you can only use bitmap tools in a mask. So we're going to grab the Marquee tool. We're going to select our text. And over here in the colors area of our toolbar, in the very top right-hand corner of the color, click and hold your paint bucket tool, and you'll notice a little menu pops out. And below the paint bucket tool is a gradient tool. We're going to set our color to no stroke, and we're going to grab a black to white gradient, just like this. And now we're going to draw from about halfway from the text straight up. And you're going to see that the, most of the text disappears, and the rest is fading until we get the solid text at the top. And I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer to about 50. All right, now I have I selected the text, not the mask there when I lowered the opacity. Okay, and there's our reflection. So there you have it. We made the shiny text in Fireworks 8. We learned a little bit about some filtering, masking. Um, and there you go, you've got your shiny text. So I hope you learned something in this tutorial. I hope you go check the site out. That is www.tutvid.com. And thank you for watching.